It has been said that when an old person dies, a library is lost. Before the internet, Facebook, Twitter, before television or radio, our culture was transmitted for generation to generation by the elders. Culture is not inherited biologically, but learned socially. Culture does not exist in isolation. It is a product of society. Pat Answers Archive is, in my own small way, a way to hand down my library to those who will come after me. A mid-1800s fable revolved around a farmer who heard the circus was coming to town. He had never seen an elephant and headed to town with his produce to see one. On the road, he encountered the elephant. Unfortunately, the farmer's horse had never seen an elephant either. The horse spooked, upset the cart, and ran off, destroying the farmer's produce. Even so, the farmer declared, I don't care, for I have seen the elephant. In 1976, I was making a pretty good part-time income as a clown magician doing children's shows and birthday parties. Through the grapevine, I'd heard that a forward-looking bank in the Chicago suburb of Wheaton, Illinois, was looking for a way to appeal to children's savers and through that, encourage business from their parents. Being somewhat of a go-getter, I contacted the bank's marketing department and, after a number of meetings and presentations, the promotion known as Breezy the Clown's Junior Savers Club came into being. It was almost an immediate hit with the kids and their young parents, as every Saturday, Breezy would be in the bank lobby sculpting balloon animals and clowning with the kids and with their parents. As the promotion grew, the bank sponsored a magic show titled Breezy's Circus of Fun that was greatly in demand by the local schools, churches, and, surprisingly, nursing homes. It was coming into summer, and the bank wanted to participate in the Independence Day Parade, so one of the marketing vice presidents thought it would be a great idea to have Breezy riding an elephant as the bank's parade entry. Inquiries were pursued, arrangements were made, and the required permits... Who knew you needed a city permit to ride an elephant in a parade? But at any rate, they were obtained. I had never ridden an elephant before, but since circus showgirls do it all the time, I figured it couldn't be too difficult. Silly clown. July the 4th dawned hot, sunny, and humid, and I was up early to apply the grease paint and get into wardrobe, transforming myself from a 30-year-old human being into Breezy the Magic Clown. Arriving at the parade staging area in two hours, in advance of step-off time for the parade, I was introduced to Isabel the Elephant and her disreputable-looking carny owner, Felix. Although I had never ridden an elephant before, I had been in proximity to elephants and, it, and was not unfamiliar with their particular perfume. Compared to Felix, however, Isabel smelled like crushed road rosebuds. There is a set procedure for mounting an elephant, no matter if you're a mahout, a showgirl, or a six foot three inch clown. You grasp the beast's head harness, place your left foot into the curled end of the trunk, at which point the animal slings you upward, and, if you're lucky, you end up astride the pachyderm's thick neck. Scary stuff for a first-time elephant jockey. Up until that day, Breezy had always performed indoors, where it was comfortably warm in the winter and comfortably cool in the summer. This day, the temperature was already 92 degrees at 10.30 in the morning, with 75% humidity. Under the best of circumstances, a clown's grease paint can be very uncomfortable since to keep it from smearing it must be well covered with talcum powder. Add high humidity and 90% plus temperatures and your skin itches as if you're covered in fire ants. Generally, the polyester wardrobe was reasonably comfortable, 
but polyester doesn't absorb perspiration well, and the wardrobe trousers were of a fairly thin material, which caused me to discover another feature of elephants that I didn't know. Elephants are covered with several sharp hairs that average three to five inches in length. Many of those sharp hairs found their way through the thin trouser material and into the tender flesh of my inner thighs. Felix walked us over to our place on the sidewalk in the staging area and told me that Isabel was well trained and would not move from where he put her. He then walked down the block to have a cigarette since Isabel didn't like the smell of cigarette smoke. We will return to Pat Answers Archives after these words. It started in a normally quiet, upscale suburb north of Chicago. A murder so grisly, so violent, it caused hard-nosed, experienced street cops to turn away in disgust. But that was just the beginning. There was more, so much more, hidden below the surface. Murder, mayhem, and arms dealing, and a plot to eliminate an international leader. It takes you on a non-stop thrill ride from Skokie, Illinois, to the Missouri Ozarks, and finally culminating in Sin City. Book number one in the Tales from the Deep State series, A Wake of Vultures, by author Patrick C. Cansor Sr., available now for $16.95, plus $5 shipping. Order today at patsanswers.com forward slash blog website by clicking on the store tab. Order it today. So there I sat, in full clown regalia on the neck of an elephant, about an hour before the parade was scheduled to step off, and I was sweating profusely. Elephants, however, apparently cannot sweat, and Isabel was as hot and uncomfortable as I was. We were staged in an upscale residential area of town, just on the other side of some barberry bushes from where we were standing was the backyard of a rather impressive home with a swimming pool. Isabel was hot and uncomfortable and not at all happy about having a 200 pound clown sitting on her neck. Smelling the pool within a short distance, she decided that she needed to investigate. Barbary bushes do not phase an animal like that. There is a reason that there is the phrase, she has a hide like an elephant. Humans, and clowns for that matter, are much more delicate flowers. As Isabel crashed through the hedge, I must have caught every thorn in my lower legs while I was hollering like a banshee for Felix to come and rescue me. An elephant's trunk is a marvelously adapted instrument. With it, elephants can lift heavy weights, delicately pick up a peanut, use it as an organ for breathing, use it as a siphon for liquids, or turn it into a do-it-yourself shower. Isabel made straight for the swimming pool, and I had this terrified vision of a clown and an elephant doing a water ballet. But Isabel had other thoughts in mind. She dipped her trunk into the pool, causing me to almost slip over her head, but not quite. She filled her trunk to the brim and then, raising the trunk over her head, sprayed her back. And a now terrified and almost hysterical clown, with a combination of pool water and elephant snot, she repeated this three times before Felix, having been informed by some of the other parade participants that his elephant was out of the line of march, so to speak, finally came and retrieved a wet elephant and a soggy clown. A few minutes later, the parade stepped off, and the rest of the event went off with unremarkable smoothness. So, I have seen the elephant. But if I never see another one, especially under those circumstances, 
It'll be too soon. Pat Answer Archives is brought to you by our online store at patsanswers.com forward slash blog. Click on the store tab. Check us out today. We thank you for watching. Oh, <laughs> folks!